On today's show, we're talking about common things that people are overspending on and don't even realize it. Like this little guy. We all have one of these. But do you know how much this thing is actually costing you? Well, hey, you guys, I am so excited about today's show. You know that my message in my heart is all about getting you guys on a budget, being intentional with your money, getting out of debt, saving up for an emergency fund, investing in for the future, all the above, right? Like really big things. But what we have to stop and realize is that in order to make those big things happen, the decisions we make day to day can really affect our outcome. And so the small decisions that we probably sometimes waste money on Mm -hmm. can affect the outcome. I'm like, it's crazy how many small things that we just waste money on that we don't even realize. I was even just doing our every dollar budget last month and I have this line item for subscriptions and like we'll put our Netflix subscription in there and all this and I'm paying $2.99, $2.99 for iCloud that I don't even use. Like I haven't used this iCloud for my pictures in like six months. Like I transferred to Dropbox. I don't use it and I've not canceled it. And every month Winston's like, babe, you need to cancel it. Like it's $2.99 that we don't, we're not using. I'm like, I know, I know. I just haven't gotten around to it. And I realized oh, that $2, even though it's just three bucks a month, little things like that over time, they really do add up. And like, let's not even talk about Amazon. I mean, oh, I love technology. Like I really do. Like our iPhones and how convenient everything is. It's great. I bought travel contact solution just yesterday off Amazon. It's wonderful. I don't have to go to Target and go. I can just go on Amazon. But We have to be careful because we can get lost in the black hole of technology and think, oh, well, it's just not that big of a deal. But again, those little purchases really add up. And that made me think of the most recent money mistake that I made. All right, let me take you back to January 2018. I was making my New Year's resolutions like everyone in America does. And I said, you know what? I'm going to start working out again. I'm gonna start, you know, really. I was actually honestly just feeling so like, oh, Caroline was like six months old. I was so tired every time in the monitor, she would cry in the mornings. I was like dragging myself out of bed. I was like, I just, I need I need to be energized. And I remember when I used to work out, I'm like, oh, I had so much energy. I was up at 4 a.m. and I drank coffee and I worked out. And I was like, this is great. So I decided I'm going to start that. I'm gonna I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna start working out. And so this blogger I follow was talking about this app where she looked great, she had all this energy, and I was like, I need what you have. So she keeps talking about this dang app, and I was like, this is this is gonna solve my problem. I just need this app. Well, I went to purchase this app, and it said that you get a better deal if you buy like a year-long membership versus paying for the app month to month. And you know me good deal. I saw saving money and I thought, well, that's smart. Sure, why not? So I clicked on it thinking in my head that I was going to pay a smaller fee month to month. I did not realize that it was going to charge me the whole thing right then. So I go about my day, you know, thinking about, you know, all the all the workouts that this app that I bought not knowing that you can have free apps that give you this information. But I was like, I'm gonna be so great and so happy and so energized. Well, our iTunes bill came through the email and Winston was like, who spent $131.09? And I thought, that's crazy. Who did? I don't know. And I looked and saw it was that dang app that I bought. And this is in February. And I was like, oh, I didn't realize it's gonna charge me the whole thing. And Winston was like, well, I mean, it's fine. Like, are you using it? No, I wasn't. I opened that app about two times and I didn't use it. Guys, guys, read the terms of agreements. I tried to cancel the app. No go, definitely no go. So the app is still on my phone, haunts me to this day. Just the conviction that like tears through that iPhone every time I open it. Oh, man, am, am I still working out? No, mm-mm, absolutely not. <laughs> so the whole thing's just a bad cycle. But man, $131, you guys, that's a lot of money. Gone, 
because I didn't read the fine print. Small decisions can affect your future. That could have been a dank date night that Winston and I would have gone on. But I know I'm not the only one that has wasted money or overspent some money. So my team and I decided to go out on the streets and figure out what you guys are overspending and wasting your money on. Yes, I definitely pay for subscriptions I don't use. I was paying for Hulu after the free trial. I was paying for Ipsy and I wasn't using it. Planet Fitness, yeah. Okay, subscriptions, yes. God, a great way to save money is to go in, take the time and cancel your memberships or subscriptions that you're not using. Now, some places are going to pressure you into like giving you a great deal not to cancel or they're gonna bug you to say signed up, but don't fall for it, okay? Don't fall for it. Cancel those subscriptions and save that money. And something else that you may not realize you're overspending money on is insurance, specifically car insurance. I do not know what my car insurance premium is. Pat, I have no clue what my insurance premium is. I don't know what my car insurance premium is. It's automatically drafted out of my account. I've never shopped for better insurance rates. It is what it is. Like, I just have it. I have never shopped for car insurance premiums or, you know, like price compared or anything. The last time I shopped for better insurance rates was last Tuesday after never. <laughs> Tuesday after never. <laughs> I can appreciate that. <laughs> yes, see, a lot of people, maybe even you, are spending more on insurance than you need to. Because listen, it's so normal just to set it and just pay it. So I don't want you to settle for just the same rate every year. Really shop around you guys and get the best rate. I actually have a list of recommended pros on my website. They'll work right beside you to get you the best rates and coverage to fit your family's needs every year. I mean, some people I know have saved up to thousands of dollars doing this. So make sure to check it out. And something else that we waste money on, overdraft fees. Some of you, guilty as charged. Yes, I've overdrawn my bank account. I, I overdraft my account all the time. I've overdrawn $300. I remember once I overdrew a thousand bucks. Overdraft fees, guilty as charged as well. Yes, back in the day, one of my famous stories is that I wrote checks back in the day when you could write checks and bounce like three checks in overdraft. It was just terrible. So I know the feeling, but listen, if you get it under control, you don't have to be like the average person that pays $225 a year in overdraft fees. You guys, don't do it, don't do it. Stick to a budget and use every dollar. I know I talk about every dollar all the time on here, but seriously, get on a budget because this is gonna help you give every single dollar a name. You know where all of your money's going, so you're not having to depend on just, oh, I hope that I don't overdraft. No, 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 you're keeping up with everything. And those of you that aren't used to budgeting or overdraft a lot, use the envelope system. I always like to say the clip system, where you go and you take categories in your budget that you tend to overspend on. So for a lot of people, that's like groceries, that's restaurants, that's clothes. Any place that you overspend on, cash out the category and say, okay, I'm gonna spend X amount this month on groceries. Cash that out and get an envelope and write food on the front and stick that money in there or get a clip and clip that money together. So you know, this is just my money from food. And this really, really will help you not only stay on budget, but not to have those pesky overdraft fees that you're wasting $225 on a year on average. No, not something else we usually waste money on. It's our cell phones. Mm the love-hate relationship with the cell phone, but it is true. A lot of us overspend on our cell phones. Uh, the one thing I do go over on my cell phone bill is the data charges. Yes, I go over on my data. I do go over, I go over my data. I used to go over on my cell phone bill whenever I had um, a restricted data plan. Oh, cell phones. Overspending is so easy. Okay, a couple of things to help you not overspend on your cell phone. Number one, look at your cell phone bill. It's amazing when you look at all the itemized things, you may see, oh, they charge me like four extra fees here. You can call, get your money back. And actually looking at your bill, be like these people over here, where you're like, oh, I'm overspending on my data so much and they're charging me all of this. Maybe I should switch plans altogether and get unlimited data versus not and looking at it all. But looking at your bill is key. Also something that you can do is actually get on a family plan with your friends. That's right, mi familia, mi amigos, we're all one, right? Now, if you do this, you have to make sure that they are friends that you trust and that are responsible. 
okay, don't go get all your friends that are crazy with their money and be like, yeah, let's just share a cell phone plan and then you end up spending more money. No, 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 responsible friends only if you wanna do it. And last but not least, a way not to overspend is don't always feel like you have to have the brand new cell phone. Love your cell phone, not theirs. Cell phone envy is a real thing. When certain companies like launch their big new phone, it's like, oh my gosh, I can't wait to see. And yes, does it have a better camera? Sure. Does it have a better screen? Yeah. Does it have a better operating system? Sure. Don't know what an operating system really is, but sure, I bet it's better, right? I'm like, I'm better, it's a better phone, I get it. But if you don't have the money, don't buy it. So the bottom line is, if the budget doesn't allow it, don't buy it. Guys, let's be real. Being a parent is hard work. Now that I have two daughters of my own, it feels like the to-do list never ends. And as every parent knows, your priorities change and you have to make important decisions for your child's future. That's why term life insurance is a must for every parent. It's so easy to get and it's affordable. What you're looking for is 10 to 12 times your annual income to make sure everyone in your family is taken care of. Winston and I use Xander Insurance. They do all the work for you to find the best prices and options. So go to xander.com to get started on a quote today because that's who we trust to take care of our family. For all you shoppers on the go, here are a few shopping tips that you need to have. I figured I'd start here at the grocery store because it's the biggest budget buster that we have. You guys, we talk about this a million times. So number one, when you're grocery shopping, make a list and stick to it. And if you go to places like Kroger here, you can actually use Kroger Click List. It's great because you make your list online, you can see your total, and it's usually worth the small fee for them to shop for you. It's fantastic. Number two, making it easy is great because on average, a recent study shows that you spend $2.71 every minute you're in the store. So get in and get out. And number three, make dinner simple. You guys, it's summer. Who has time to cook a big meal anyways? So do a BLT, a salad, or breakfast for dinner. Make it easy. And another shopping tip on the go is for all you Target lovers out there. Yes, I'm here at my mother's show. <laughs> okay, number one is to make sure to get the Cartwheel app. This is like a whole new way of couponing. You can see the great deals going on at Target. And number two, get the Target Red Card. This is not a credit card, it is Target's debit card, and it's amazing. My sweet mother actually is so scared to get this because she thinks it's a credit card, and it's not. It's a debit card, and you get 5% off and free shipping, which we all love. Go into Target and only get what you need. Yes, only get what you need, okay? It's a black hole of goodness, we all know that. You go in for mascara and you end up spending like 150 bucks, okay? So just make sure you go in and get exactly what you need. And these tips really can be for any store because there's a lot of stores out there that feel like a black hole. So we wanna have fun this summer. So number one, date nights. You can do this really inexpensively. Winston and I, we love going to happy hour because everything's half off from the appetizers and all. Or you can even go to Sam's or Costco if you think ahead of time, and you can actually get gift cards cheap for restaurants. It's amazing. Or even just go get dessert somewhere, but you can get out together inexpensively. Number two, your local library. It has air conditioning, which is amazing. A relief from the hot summer weather, but also you can rent more than just library books. You can do movies, it's a whole experience. And last but not least, your local drive-in. Okay, it's not really local where I live, so you have to drive like an hour. But you guys, this is so fun. You get to watch a movie, even two movies for the price of one, and the food there is usually really cheap. So you get this whole experience of a drive-in. It's like you're going back in time. It's wonderful. And those are my summer money-saving tips on the go. So let's head back to the studio. Another place that people are losing money that you may not even think about is when it comes to your mortgage. Yes, people, it's so normal just to get a 30-year mortgage and go about your day and not even think about it. Do you know how much money you're wasting when it comes to payments and interest and all of that versus getting a 15 year? So what I did is I went into my Facebook group and I asked some of you questions and in my YouTube community because I wanted to test your smarts when it comes to paying your house off early. And it was very interesting. So according to the Census Bureau, the average mortgage payment is $1,030. Now, if you invested that money, instead of paying it to the bank, 
how much could you have in 15 years? Let's see what you said. Oh, interesting. 34% of you got it right. The correct answer is $475,000. Mm-hmm. You heard me right. Almost half a million dollars, you guys. If you didn't have a mortgage payment and you invested that, half a million dollars. Amazing. All right, next question is, if you had a 30-year mortgage but made one extra mortgage payment every three months, how much earlier could you have a paid-for house? All right, this one was a little bit trickier, but most of you thought the answer was five years, but it's actually 11 years. Yeah, 11 years. That's the difference of looking like this when you have a paid-for house or looking like this. If paying an extra full mortgage payment doesn't work in your budget, then just simply switch to paying half of your mortgage bill every two weeks instead of just once a month, and you could still pay off your home eight years faster. Isn't that crazy? All right, final question is, the average price of a home in America is $268,500. Now, if you got a 15-year instead of a 30-year mortgage at the current interest rate, that's 4.5%, which of these things could you buy with the money that you would have saved? A, a designer handbag every six months for 30 years. B, a nice beach vacation for your family for the next 30 years. Or C, a water jetpack. Let's see. Oh, everyone got this one right. Yep, the answer is any of these. Yes, if you just got a 15 year instead of a 30 year, you would have saved $120,000. Amazing. And I actually got a couple of other funny responses when it comes to this. One of you said, probably as big as any rental property or a lot of shoes. I'm kidding, kind of. Someone else said, an early retirement. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. Amazing. And you know what? If your mortgage is stressing you out, there is no shame in considering just downgrading or even selling your home. The cash you can make could really set you up for success in the long term. And if you use one of our trusted professionals that I recommend, you could get almost $5,000 more at closing than with another agent. So remember, once you own your home, you guys, you have a paid for house and it's now an asset that's 100% yours. And that really contributes to your net worth. You're no longer paying the bank, you are paying you and your future. Now, if you wanna find out what your 15 year payment would be, we've got a free and easy to use mortgage calculator. So make sure to click the link below. So we've been talking about taking your 30 year mortgage down to a 15 and some of you are thinking that's impossible, Rachel. And I'm here to tell you anything's possible if you believe, you guys. And so I brought in Cole here to share her story because she did this. She's like a true life example of going from a 30 year to a 15 year mortgage. And you did it, didn't you? Yes. And I like to point out too, you got a little bump, <laughs> yeah. a little baby bump. Yes. She's pregnant. We like babies around here. Okay. How far along are you? 36 weeks. 36 weeks. Is it your first? It is. Yes. First. First. First little one. Yes. So fun. Which makes this whole story, I think, even better because... Exactly. This baby's going to experience a 15-year mortgage house and not a 30-year. Exactly. So. <laughs> okay, so talk to me about your home buying process. Okay. When was it that you first bought your home? What was your situation? Were you single, married? Tell me everything. I purchased my home in August of 2005. Okay. I closed on my house two weeks before I graduated from college. Had roommates who helped pay my, bill, my mortgage and everything. So what made you buy a house in college? I'm curious. I didn't want to rent and that, you know, I had a down payment there sitting there because yes. I worked full time the entire time I was in college and just kind of wanted that freedom mm -hmm. away from home, away from renting. And like so I you said, had I money saved up for a down payment already. So what percentage, how much did you have down? I have five. And you said, okay, I'm 22, I'm going to buy a house. So you bought the house mm -hmm. and you put it on a 30 year. It was year, a 30 year. 30 year. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so tell me about the time when you looked up and you said, oh, I want to do something different. I really want to refinance and change to a 15-year. After the real estate market crashed and all the interest rates went down so significantly, everybody was refinance. <laughs> yes. Your interest rate will drop. Refinance. So I thought, okay, why not? Looked into it and said, hey, you know, what could I get? Just at a lower rate. And she right. said, well, we can do a 15 at 2.3 or 2.5. 2.5% interest mm -hmm. on a 15-year. What was your 30-year? My 30-year was right at 7%. So 
almost a 5% difference, you guys, in interest. I mean, that's amazing. It that is. really is. And that may not be the case for everyone, but you guys, if you do refinance, your 15-year mortgage will have a lower interest rate than your 30. Maybe not 5%, but that's amazing. Right. That's <laughs> like, Jesus is like, I'm going to bless you today. Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. So great. Exactly. So we went through the process, and she said, you know, your payment's going to be less, and we're going to escrow your taxes and insurance. That way, you don't have to worry about paying those. So having that escrow account, it's like a third party holding some of that and that. Yeah, so you didn't have that. Amazing. So the first seven years that I lived there, yeah, I was having to pay the higher mortgage payment that none of it was going to principal, plus the insurance, plus the taxes out of pocket. <laughs> yes. So now I'm going to a lower payment and all of it's together. So once you got to that 15 year, you were so motivated, right? I mean, you were like, exactly. I can pay this, I can pay this quickly, especially since the payment was lower than mm -hmm. your 30 year, which may not happen again. But still, I mean, that's part <laughs> of the story, which is just amazing. Even if it's a little more, you're paying a lot less in interest over the time. If I had paid it just the payment over the 30 years, my house that I paid one, I think 116 for would have cost 240 something thousand dollars. I paid it off in 124,000, I think. <laughs> So you and paid it 15 off. year. Don't catch that, you guys. You, what? Yes, paid my house off, paid my mortgage off. You have no <laughs> payments at all. No payments And how at old all. are you? I'm 35. 35 years mm -hmm. old, you guys. That's, I mean, seriously, that's amazing. At 22, mm -hmm. that 30 year, if you just stuck with it, you would have been 52 years old mm -hmm. when your house was paid for. But not only did you refinance, get a lower interest rate, get a lower payment, but you kept paying aggressively on it. You paid it off by the time you're were, you were held again. 35. 35. Well, Cole, thank you so much for sharing your story. Seriously, it's so inspiring, you guys, because it's like, okay, you can do this. You can go refinance your house, get it down to that 15-year mortgage, and just like what Cole was saying, you get 15, you're like, well, what if I pay it off sooner? And you keep getting, being aggressive, pay it off where you have zero payments and your house is yours. So I hope you guys are motivated by Cole's story because I think it's absolutely amazing and such a testament that you can do this if you decide to. So absolutely, congrats, girl. Thank you. So <laughs> proud of you. That's awesome. So awesome. All right, it's time. The best part of the show where we get to celebrate you all and what you're saving up money for. It is time for She Works Hard Saving Money. Laura P said, we bought a second vehicle with cash this weekend. My husband and I have been saving in a sinking fund for quite some time, and it was an incredible feeling to pay cash for a vehicle. Laura P, amazing. And FYI, a sinking fund just means that you're saving a little bit of money each month in a fund to pay for something big, like a vehicle, like Laura P did. Well done, girl. Ashley said, in high school, Dave Ramsey inspired me to get through college with no debt. It took a lot of work, but I did it. This is more exciting to me than the actual graduation. <laughs> Ashley, that's awesome. Debt-free, living, it's great. Laura V said, we just came back from our holiday in South Spain. Laura V, my gosh. We're on baby step six, and really, there is no better way to zen when you can free your mind of it all, including financial stress. Amen. We have a huge travel bucket and thus can spend it without any guilt on all the great things out there. If you're not there yet, hang in there. The struggle is real, but it is worth it. Yes, it is, Laura B. So good. Okay, so she said that they're on baby step six, which means they are completely debt free. They have a fully funded emergency fund of three to six months of expenses. And now they're saving 15% of their income into retirement. They're funding their kids' college and they're paying their house off early. They're doing all of those things and going to Espana. Yeah. It's amazing. Well done, well done. So you guys, I want you to keep sharing all of the things that you are saving up for or have saved for and make sure to use the hashtag, she works hard saving money and make sure to join our Facebook community for some great money saving tips there. So thanks so much for watching this episode. And I wanna thank Cole for coming in and sharing her story. And don't forget to subscribe because you definitely don't wanna miss next episode where it's all about staying on budget this summer. And remember to take control of your money and create a life you love.